Is the Biden administration's humanitarian parole program dead in the water? In this video, we'll uncover the shocking fraud that derailed this crucial lifeline for thousands of Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, and Cubans seeking safety in the United States. We'll explore the explosive implications of this program's suspension. We'll look at where things are headed with the program and talk about what it all means for the future of immigration policy and the upcoming presidential elections. To be sure, the program's suspension couldn't have come at a worse time for Venezuelans in particular who are facing escalating political violence. We're covering all this and more, and we're starting right now. I'm Brian Manning, and I used to be an asylum officer with the government, but now, as an asylum lawyer, well, I help immigrants all over the country to secure their future in America through asylum. Let me know in the comments if you've got an asylum case pending, or maybe you're considering applying. And listen, I'd especially like to hear from you if you've been waiting for multiple years for an asylum interview with USCIS. Let me know in the comments how long you've been waiting. The Biden administration's humanitarian parole program for Venezuelans, Haitians, Nicaraguans and Cubans was a beacon of hope for thousands of people. But as with many immigration policies, it's hit a major roadblock. And today we're breaking down this program, its recent pause and the potentially explosive implications of it all. Let's start with the basics. So the program officially called the Processes for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans and Venezuelans known by its acronym CHNV was designed to provide a safe legal pathway for nationals from these countries to enter the United States. Now, up to 30,000 individuals per month could receive humanitarian parole, allowing them to live and work legally in the United States for up to two years. Now, this program was really a response to pressure the Biden administration was receiving to take action to try to reduce the flow of asylum seekers and other migrants coming to the southern border. Now, mayors from Democrat-led cities were especially adamant about trying to stem the tide of migrants who were coming to their cities and putting pressure on public resources. The Biden administration likewise saw that immigration was going to be a major issue in the 2024 presidential campaign. Voters are listing immigration generally and the border specifically as among the issues that they care about most heading into the November elections. Now, Biden saw this parole program as a way to keep some people from coming to the border, offer them a chance to come legally on an airplane rather than facing untold dangers in northern Mexico. And you might just make headway in bringing the number of border crossers down. And indeed, the program has been attributed with helping in this regard. Applicants for the parole program needed a US-based sponsor, and they have to pass background checks and also meet other requirements, including vaccinations and travel documentation. They also have to cover their own travel expenses. Now, contrary to misinformation being spread by Republicans who are seeking to whip up and leverage anti-immigrant sentiment, the United States government is not paying to bring anyone here. The parole program faced criticism and a legal challenge from Texas and 20 other Republican-led states who were claiming that it caused them financial harm. Now, however, a U.S. district judge dismissed the lawsuit, noting that the states failed to demonstrate actual financial harm, which is a necessary component for legal standing. The judge's ruling highlighted a key point that really undermines arguments against the program. The data showed that the parole program actually did reduce the number of migrants crossing into the US. And this finding directly contradicts claims that the program contributes to illegal immigration. By the way, if you wanna maximize your chances for asylum success, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss the insights that I share on this channel. Now, while this legal victory allowed the program to continue, it's now facing a different challenge. The Department of Homeland Security, DHS, recently paused the program due to significant concerns about fraudulent activities. Now, DHS says that it uncovered widespread fraud in the sponsorship process. Sponsors were using the same addresses, social security numbers, and other personal information multiple times. Some addresses were linked to warehouses and storage units. In some cases, identical information 
was submitted by thousands of applicants. The scale of this fraud really is significant. One sponsor's phone number appeared on over 2,000 forms. Some addresses were used between 124 and 739 times on over 19,000 forms. In total, over 100,000 forms were filled out by just over 3,200 sponsors. And even more disturbing, some of the most frequently used social security numbers belonged to dead people. So yeah, it does look like there was a lot of fraud. Sponsors in the United States were abusing the program undoubtedly for financial gain. So in response, DHS paused the issuance of new travel authorizations to review and address these fraudulent activities. The pause initially affected only Venezuelan applicants in early July, but it was extended to applicants from the other three countries, Cuba, Haiti, and Nicaragua by mid-July. So at present, no new travel authorizations are being issued. The program has come to a halt. And now the big question on everyone's mind is, well, Will this program be reinstated? And if so, when? So the good news is that it sounds like DHS does plan to start the program up again. Unfortunately though, there's no clear timeline for when that might happen. Now, DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas has stated that the program will in fact resume processing applications, quote, as swiftly as possible, but with necessary safeguards in place to prevent future fraud. The department is currently reviewing applications to implement these safeguards, but you know, this process takes time. They're likely developing new verification procedures, enhancing their fraud detection algorithms, and also potentially restructuring parts of the application process. While the Biden administration aims to restart application processing quickly, they're walking a tightrope between speed and security. It's worth noting that DHS has emphasized that while the vetting of US-based sponsors revealed issues, the screening and vetting of the migrants themselves did not show concerning issues. This distinction suggests that once the sponsorship fraud is addressed, the program could potentially resume relatively quickly. However, the political climate could influence the timeline, with both major parties, the Republicans and Democrats, focusing on immigration in their campaigns, there might be pressure to either expedite or delay the program's reinstatement depending on how it's perceived to impact voter sentiment. Now, here's where things get really complicated. This pause could not have come at a worse time, especially for Venezuelans. Venezuela is currently experiencing a new level of political turmoil that could lead to a humanitarian crisis of staggering proportions. The Maduro-led government has committed massive fraud in recent presidential elections and appears determined to hold on to power at any cost, despite international consensus that it lost. Massive protests have erupted and they've been met with brutal repression. Security services and government supporters known as colectivos have violently attacked supporters of the political opposition, which is led by Maria Corina Machado and the rightful president-elect Edmundo Gonzalez. At least 16 people have been killed. Now there are fears that millions more Venezuelans could flee the country if Maduro maintains his grip on power. While there's hope that popular protests and international pressure may force him out, it remains to be seen whether that will happen or whether the government may escalate its persecution of the political opposition. The pausing of the humanitarian parole program in this context is like throwing gasoline on a fire. Without this legal pathway, we could see a greater flow of Venezuelan asylum seekers at the U.S. southern border. This influx could have far-reaching implications even affecting the U.S. elections. Both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are focusing their campaigns on immigration, responding to a public that's weary of illegal immigration and demanding action to secure the border. A surge of Venezuelan asylum seekers could become a political powder keg, potentially swaying voter sentiment and shaping immigration policy for years to come. As a former asylum officer, I can tell you that this situation is deeply concerning. The humanitarian parole program, despite its flaws, provided a crucial safety valve. It offered a legal orderly pathway for those fleeing persecution, reducing pressure on the asylum system and deterring dangerous border crossings. Without this program, more Venezuelans fleeing political violence may feel that they have no choice choice but to attempt risky border crossings. Now this not only puts their lives in danger, but also strains border resources and fuels the very illegal immigration that many Americans are concerned about. The fraud uncovered in the program is undoubtedly serious and needs to be addressed, but the wholesale suspension of the parole program 
could have dire consequences. It's crucial that DHS work quickly to implement safeguards and restart this parole program. If you're ready to take the next step and get help with your asylum case, then call my office today. That number is 713-909-0401. And remember, we help people all over the country, so it doesn't matter where you live. Call us right now to schedule an asylum strategy session so that we can help you to secure your future in America through asylum. Again, I'm Brian Manning, and it's truly an honor to support you in your asylum journey.